three vegetarian sharing style recipes. These recipes are perfect for sharing if you are hosting for family and friends, but if you actually just wanna impress yourself, they're also really enjoyable just to serve for one, which is what I do a lot of the time. I like, you know, make a big deal for myself. Hey, for more of my recipes, you can head over to my website, go and check out my eBooks over there at www.tishwonders.co.uk. The sponsor of this week's video is Babbel. Babbel is one of the top language learning apps in the world. I am currently in Brazil. It is my first time traveling throughout this beautiful country. It has given me the confidence to speak basic Portuguese in situations situations that I would have been completely lost otherwise. Eu não entendi. Eu não entendi. Eu não entendi. Eu não entendi. De onde você é? I love that it prepares and teaches real life conversations. I have found this to be super valuable whilst traveling throughout Brazil. It has added so much to this trip of a lifetime. Click the link in my description to get 60% off your Babbel subscription. There are a few to choose from, including a lifetime subscription. Drop me a comment and let me know which language you have wanted to try out. There is no time like the present. I'm telling you, Babbel is incredible. Head over to their website and check them out. Thank you so much to Babbel for sponsoring today's video. Let's jump straight in to the first recipe. Let's go. We are going to kick things off with my miso roasted cauliflower butter bean and romesco salad. So this was actually inspired from a balance bowl that I shared years ago. I've taken elements from that bowl and I've created this sharing plate. Anybody who knows about a romesco knows that it is one of the most divine sauces that you can create. Topped with that miso roasted cauliflower, you might think that the flavor pairing is quite unusual, but that's what I actually love about this dish. It works so well, the romesco and the miso. Trust me on this one. So for our gorgeous, luxurious romesco, we are going to be needing some red peppers. If you don't have time to chop up and roast red peppers, you could definitely use jarred peppers. I personally prefer to roast my peppers myself though. We'll also be needing some sun-dried tomatoes, which will add so much depth of flavor to our romesco sauce. A key ingredient in a romesco are almonds. I'm using some blanched almonds along with some chili flakes and some paprika. Butter beans are the perfect add-on ingredient for this sharing plate salad. If you want, you could use chickpeas in place, you could use white beans, you could use any beans of choice. Any type of pulse or lentil that you enjoy will just work really well for this. We're gonna keep the butter beans really simple with just lots of fresh coriander and some red onion, lemon juice. I'm seeing cauliflowers everywhere in the farmer's market right now. Um, they're definitely in their prime. So for our miso cauliflower, of course, we're going to be needing some cauliflower and some good quality miso that you enjoy, that you enjoy the taste of. So we definitely want to start by preparing our romesco, which takes a few steps. Um, the longest step is just putting these red peppers to roast, which is just a case of chopping up the red peppers and putting them on a lined baking sheet, swirling a little bit of olive oil, seasoning with a little bit of salt, just making sure all pieces are covered. So you want to place the tray into to a 190 degree Celsius oven and leave in there for about 35 to 40 minutes. You wanna make sure that the peppers are well cooked, that they've released all their flavor, all their sweetness, and that they will be delicious once we're done for this romesco sauce. So for our miso cauliflower, we are going to start off just by, you can either chop it. I decided halfway through that I didn't wanna chop. I wanted to tear my cauliflower pieces off and just make sure you give your cauliflower florets a good wash before placing on a flat lined baking sheet. You'll probably need quite a large one. For our miso cauliflower seasoning, we are going to combine some extra virgin olive oil with some miso paste along with some tamari. You could definitely use soy sauce. Tamari is just a gluten-free version of soy sauce. Throw some garlic and some red chili in there and just mix everything well. Swell that seasoning over the cauliflower, just making sure all pieces are properly covered really well and yeah place the cauliflower tray into the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes until the cauliflower is beautifully cooked and golden the red peppers and cauliflower will both be in the oven roasting away so we're going to continue by chopping up our ingredients and just combining everything for our butter bean for the butter bean layer in this salad so we're going to grab a red onion we are going to finely finely chop it you can be really subtle with the red onion you don't need too much and we're also going to finely chop up 
our fresh coriander the opposite of the red onion i like a lot of coriander but obviously just work these recipes you know to suit what you enjoy so drain off your butter beans and place them into a bowl followed on by the chopped red onion that fresh coriander some extra virgin olive oil some lemon juice some cumin powder some salt and some pepper and just mix everything well give the butter beans a taste adjust the seasoning if it is necessary if you feel to and just set them aside until we are ready to plate up this salad so you can go ahead and remove those roasted red peppers from the oven they should be looking sweet and juicy and vibrant and just mm. i personally keep the pepper skin on i actually like the flavor that it adds but that's just preference so grabbing a high speed blender or a food processor whatever you're working with we are going to combine all of our romesco sauce ingredients, roasted red peppers, along with our sun-dried tomatoes, our almonds, some lemon juice, some chili flakes, some paprika, some salt, and some extra virgin olive oil, a good swell of extra virgin olive oil. We are just gonna whiz everything up until we reach our desired consistency. There is nothing that compares to a romesco. Sometimes forget how delicious it is, and when I make it again, I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> why haven't I made this in so long? I say double the batch so you have extra in your your fridge you will thank me later there will be no regrets about having heaps of this sauce dip whatever you want to call it readily available in your fridge so once your cauliflower is piping hot steaming looking something like this it will be time to remove it from the oven and all that is left to do is to plate up this gorgeous gorgeous salad so we are going to grab that smooth romesco just swirl it on a plate place on those butter beans along with that cauliflower i topped mine with some fresh parsley some extra chili a drizzle of olive oil and oh my goodness i say that these are sharing plates but i could honestly eat the whole thing if you're looking to add a vibrant dish a standout dish to a dinner table something that everybody will love guaranteed this one is for you this whipped basil ricotta smashed lemon and herb potato salad will have you on the edge of your seat. I am warning you, this one is so damn good. So for our whipped basil ricotta, we are going to combine some ricotta cheese along with some Greek yogurt. And we are going to be using tons of fresh basil. I always say fresh basil is my feel good herb. Just the smell of fresh basil just does something for me. If you're not a fan of basil, dill in place would work really well. And actually it would work really well with the smashed potatoes. Any green herb that you enjoy, this whipped ricotta will be incredible. So for our smashed lemon and herb potatoes, I'm using some baby potatoes. You can use any variety that you have on hand. We'll also be needing some lemons. We will use the juice for the whipped basil ricotta and we'll use the zest for the smashed lemon and herb potatoes. To garnish this dish, I made some quick pickled red onions and I also placed on top some chives. To begin with, I actually chopped up my baby potatoes, which I've never done when I've made smashed potatoes, by the way. So I don't know why I decided to do it this time, but I would 100% definitely just keep them whole. There is no need to chop them. Don't do what I did. Just keep your baby potatoes whole and put them to boil in some good salted water. So whilst our potatoes are boiling, we will combine some extra virgin olive oil with some oregano some dried garlic powder and some paprika and just mix everything together we'll also then add in some lemon zest so once your potatoes have softened you don't want them falling apart completely but you don't want them too hard you kind of want them somewhere in the middle it's really difficult for me to give an exact time because everyone's potatoes are going to vary so they might need a little less they might need a little longer depending you just keep an eye on them so using a potato smasher that's what i found easiest to use you could use the back of a flat glass I just smashed my potatoes and I drizzled over all of that herb and lemon seasoning, just making sure the potatoes were covered well. I roasted these for quite a long time. I'd say I left them in there for about 50 minutes. Depending on how crispy you want them, you can just play it by ear, keep an eye on them, make sure that they don't burn. So whilst our potatoes are cooking, we can put together our whipped basil ricotta, which is very, very simple. We're just gonna grab a food processor and we're gonna place in our ricotta, our Greek yogurt, fresh garlic, some basil, lemon juice, and some salt. And we're just gonna whiz everything up until we have this gorgeous looking green whipped ricotta, which will pair with so many dishes, perfect as a side on a balance bowl, or if you wanna combine it with your breakfast, maybe spread some on some sourdough with some scrambled eggs, it will be beautiful. 
To top this sharing plate, I thought let me just quickly pickle some red onions, but the quick way, not the proper way, the quick way with ingredients that I had on hand. So I thinly sliced up some red onions and I combined them with some apple cider vinegar, some sugar and some salt. Very simple, I just set them aside until it was time to serve. So once the potatoes have fully crisped up to your liking, you can go ahead and remove them from the oven. The only thing left to do is to put this sharing plate together, this heavenly sharing plate. So we're gonna grab that whipped basil ricotta. We're gonna place on top those smashed lemon and herb potatoes followed on by some quick pickled red onions if you choose to prepare them and I also chopped up some chives and just put those on top absolutely gorgeous when you serve this one up there won't be a crumb left I'm telling you this one will be gone devoured enjoyed by anyone and everyone who tries it keeping that energy high just as I have with the other sharing plates that I've shown you this one will not disappoint. This is my crispy lentil, roast beet and squash, almond and herb crumb salad. This salad was put together very intuitively. I love just freestyling in the kitchen. That is the best way I think that you can create. And this is a product of me freestyling <laughs> this one right here. These are Pui lentils, Pui spelled P-U-Y. Um, you could use beluga lentils if you'd prefer, or if you have chickpeas, they will work as well. You could crisp them up in the same way that I'm gonna crisp these lentils up. You could do it in the oven, but I'm gonna show you how I just like to quickly do it in a pan, really, really simple. Beetroot has been calling me recently. I kind of go through phases of just really having like this deep connection with it. And right now I'm just in one of those moods Foods. Um, I've been steaming it, pressure cooking it, juicing it, name it. I've been using beetroot in every way possible. Um, so we are going to actually roast it today, which I love. It just really brings the flavor out. We're going to roast it along with some butternut squash. You'll see that the ingredients in this salad just speaks for itself. So we really don't need to complicate things. We're going to serve this on a layer of Greek yogurt. Of course, if you're dairy free, you can use an alternative. And for that almond and herb crumb, just a really random creation that I did. I had these flaked almonds. You're gonna see how I combine these with herbs. It's delicious. Like all of the other sharing plates that I've shared, we are going to be needing lots of lemon and we are also going to be chopping up lots of fresh parsley. You can use any green herb of your choice in place if you don't have parsley. So to begin with, we are going to chop up our vegetables to put to roast. So for me, that included peeling and chopping up the butternut squash. You could definitely leave the skin on the butternut squash if you want to. Again, you can leave the skin on the beetroot if you want to. I actually chopped the beetroot a little bit thinner than the butternut squash because I find that beetroot takes a little bit longer. So just so they cook in the same amount of time. Um, yeah, I chose to go smaller, a little bit smaller with the beetroot. And also a note about beetroot, do not worry about it staining your hands. I find that it washes off really, really easily. So yeah, don't worry about having purple fingers for a second, it will be fine. <laughs> so follow through by placing the chopped beetroot onto the lined baking sheet and uh, drizzle with some olive oil. We're gonna use lots of fresh roasting herbs. So I've got some rosemary and some thyme. So place your baking sheet into an oven of around 200 degrees. You're gonna leave it in there for about 30 minutes, 35 minutes until the butternut squash and beetroot are properly roasted. Whilst everything is roasting away, we can just quickly toast our almond flakes. This is just gonna release the flavors, make them even tastier. Once they've got a slight golden tint to them, we are going to place them in a pestle and mortar along with some fresh rosemary, or you could actually use the roasted rosemary from the vegetables once they're cooked, which would be so delicious, plus a little touch of salt and just crush everything to make our almond and herb crumb. So start off by finely chopping up some garlic. You wanna be using a sharp knife with a steady hand. So heat a pan on a low to medium heat. Um, you're gonna place in a little bit of butter and then we are going to place in that thinly sliced garlic. Now we're gonna cook it on a really gentle, gentle low heat until it has a little golden touch to it. Make sure you don't burn the garlic. Really important, don't burn it. We just want it golden, just a little bit golden. Remove the garlic from the pan and just set it aside for a minute. Place in your lentils and season with some salt, some herb de Provence. You can even give it a little swell of olive oil if necessary um, in that pan. You'll see that the lentils will get this crispy kind of texture. That's when we wanna throw that golden garlic back in along with lots of lemon zest. 
just continue to stir everything, combine everything, let those flavors run through those lentils and let the lentils just get even crispier. The crispier, the better. I'm choosing to do this in a pan, um, but just a note, you could definitely crisp lentils up in the oven if you don't wanna do them in the pan like I did. To finish these lentils, I finely chopped up lots of parsley and I just scattered the parsley in, just combining everything one last time. So remove that tray of roasted vegetables, that butternut squash and that beetroot. So to serve up the sharing plate, let's add a thick layer of Greek yogurt to start with, topped with those roasted vegetables, that butternut squash and beetroot. Then we are going to scatter on top those crispy lentils with that crispy garlic and top with that herb and almond crumb. Drizzle a little bit of olive oil, give it some more parsley if you want to and just enjoy. Again, I just love the fusion of flavor and texture with this sharing plate. The simplicity of this dish, yet the intricate layers and flavors and textures that just work really amazingly together. I am so confident that when you try out these sharing plates, you will cook from a place of love. You will feel the love running through the food. And I just hope that these ideas just bring so much joy to your life, enjoying foods with the people that you love. Just a word that you can definitely enjoy these sharing plates if you're just cooking for one. Treat your Yourself, treat yourself well, pour into yourself as you would do for others. Let me know in the comments what you think of these ideas. Let me know if you would like to see more. For more of my recipes, you can head over to my website, go and check out all of my recipe eBooks over there. I will see you all in my next video soon. Everyone take care. Bye.